Hey everyone, this is Justin from Just Into Data. How to do data analysis in Python? In this video, you'll follow along and work on a project based on a real life data set. You'll import, explore, and visualize the data to answer interesting questions. By the end, you'll get practical experience of analyzing data in Python. Before we start, I'd like to mention that this video is inspired by our course, Python for Data Analysis, Step-by-Step -step with Projects. It features hours of video lectures, as well as guided practice projects based on real-world datasets. To learn more with details and depth, you can click the link in the description to check out the course. All right, let's get started with this project. We'll use a dataset about movies and their actors' information from 1990 to 2021. You can download the CSV file as well as a completed notebook with code from the links in the description below. We'll use Python to import, explore, filter the data, convert data types, extract daytime information, sort the data, and calculate summary statistics with group by, as well as visualize the data. Before starting, you'll need to set up your Python environment for this project. You'll definitely need Python, a couple of its data science libraries, as well as JupyterLab, which is the interface you can see on the screen right now. The easiest way to do this is through downloading the Anaconda distribution. This video also assumes you already know basic Python. If you need help with installation or the basic Python knowledge, you can take our free Python crash course which I'll put a link below. All right, now we can start. We'll follow the guidance of these questions on the notebook to explore the dataset. Let's go through them one by one. First, we'll import the libraries. Import pandas as pd and import seaborn as sns. We'll use these two libraries, pandas and seaborn. To run this code, you can either click on the Run button here, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift-Enter. There. Then, we'll load the data into Python as a pandas data frame. Let's call it DF Movie Actors. Then assign it as the pandas pd read csv function with argument as a movie actors csv file. So here I save this movie actors CSV file under the same directory as this Jupyter notebook. So I only need to call the CSV file by its name. Otherwise, you'll need to type in the full path to the file. Now we have the data in Python. To look at an info summary of this data frame, we'll do DF movie actors, the data frame's name, followed by the info method. This returns a summary about the data frame. For example, we can see that it has 165 130 rows and 10 columns. All the column names are listed here. We can also see that all the columns have non-null counts of 165 130, which match with the total number of rows. So there's no null or missing values in this data set. Besides the non-null count, there's also the data types, D types of each column. To take an actual look at the data, we can use the head method. This, by default, prints out the first five rows of the data frame. Each row in the data frame stores a movie actor record. We have movie information like ID, title, popularity, release date, budget, and revenue. We also have movie actors information, including ID, name, order, and gender. Next, we can check for each of these columns. What are the number of unique values in them? We'll apply on the data frame the nUnique method. For example, we can see that there are 4,960 different movie IDs, while there are only 4,911 different movie titles. This is because some of the movies could share the same title. Similarly, we can also see that we have 83,607 actor IDs, while the unique actor name count is less than that, since the actors could share the same name as well. 
One thing strange is that the actor gender column has four unique values. Let's explore it more. To select this column, we do data frame DF movie actors followed by square brackets and put the column name actor gender as a string in it. There it is. Then we can look at this column's unique values and their counts. So calling this column, then apply the value counts method on it. This returns a unique genders and their counts. The genders have values of 0, 1, 2, and 3, with 2 being the most common value with a count of over 80,000, then 0, 1, while value of 3 only appears 43 times in the dataset. Let's filter for each of these unique values to take a look. To filter for a condition, we first set up a Boolean series of true or false. So say DF movie actors actor gender column equals equals 2. This is checking whether each element in this column has a value of 2. When it is 2, it returns true. When it's not 2, it returns false. We can then do data frame DF movie actors followed by square brackets and copy this condition into the square brackets. This filters for all the rows in the data frame with this condition being true. You can see all the actor gender column has a value of 2. Looking at the actor names, you can Google a few of them and you'll see that they're all male. So it's likely that when the gender column has a value of 2, the gender is male. Similarly, we can also find that when gender is 0, it's a mix of both male and female. So perhaps the data is missing, so it's marked as 0. When the gender is 1, it looks like the actors are all female. And when it's 3, the actors seem to be transgender or non-binary. I won't go through each of the gender categories, but feel free to explore on your own. Now let's try some more filtering conditions. Who are the male actors in the movie Furious 7? We can again write the filtering condition first. Let's say DF movie actors actor gender column equals equals 2. We've just checked that all the 2s are for sure male actors. Then and DF movie actors movie title column equals equals Furious 7. Next, we'll add parentheses on both conditions to clarify the logic. So this returns a Boolean series only when the actor is male and the movie title is Furious 7. We'll assign this series to a variable called msk. Then same as before, we can call the original data frame, followed by square brackets, and put this filtering condition msk inside. There it is. You can see that these are the rows with movie title being Furious 7 and actor gender being 2, which is male. Next, who are the leading actors in the movie Furious 7? We can again set up a Boolean series to filter for these rows. Say DF movie actors movie title column equals Furious 7 and DF movie actors actor order column less than 5. This actor order column represents the rank of actor by their leading positions in a movie. So for a movie, it has integer values of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on for different actors. We'll look at the actors with order below 5, so the leading ones. Don't forget to add parentheses to these two conditions. We'll again assign this to a variable called msk. You can name this variable to other names. I'm just reusing the same name here. Then after the original data frame, will follow by the square brackets with msk inside. This filters for the movie title being Furious 7, and the actor order column has values of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are all below 5. So these are the five leading actors in the movie Furious 7. All right, next we'll focus on the movie release date. We need to convert this data type to date time. So what is it now? Let's print it out to take a look. It is now of an object data type. 
To convert it to date time dtype, we can do pandas pd dot to date time function with argument being the column. This converts it to date time dtype. Then we'll reassign this back to the original data frames movie release date column. Now, if we print out DF movie actors dtypes attribute, you can see that the movie release date is of a date time dtype. We can manipulate this column as date time now. So next question, what are the start and end dates of this data set? We can simply print out for this movie release date column, the min and the max methods. So we have data for movies from this date time to this date time. Based on the movie release date column, we can also generate new columns. Say let's do a new column to store the year portion of the date. We can do DF movie actors data frame square brackets, say movie release year. We don't have a column with this name in the data frame, so we're creating a new column. Let's assign it as a movie release date columns dot dt dot year attribute. If we print out this new column to take a look, you can see that it stores only the year part. So far, we've been looking at the DF movie actors data frame, which has movie information and actors information. Next, let's focus on studying the columns with the movie information only. We want to create a new data frame with only the unique movies information. First, how do we filter for these columns with only movie information? We can do DF movie actors columns attribute. This prints out all the column names. We only want to filter for these columns from movie ID to movie revenue, and also movie release year, but not these actors columns. We can do DF movie actors square brackets within which put a list of column names. We'll copy from movie ID to movie revenue and also movie release year. This returns a sub data frame with only these columns we filtered for. But as you can see, there are many duplicates for the same movie. For example, for this movie ID of 19185 with title Night of the Living Dead, there are many rows. That's because each movie has different actors and each actor is stored as one row. But now that we filtered only for movie information, these rows are duplicates. Let's remove the duplicated rows. We can add to this filter data frame the drop duplicates method and assign it to a new data frame called DF movies. If we print out DF movies head, you can see that there's no duplicated rows for this movie, Night of the Living Dead anymore. Great. Each row stores a unique movie. Now we can answer some interesting questions at the movie level. So what are the top 10 movies with the highest movie revenue? We can do DF movies, the new data frame with only unique movies, then apply the n largest method with argument as n as 10 and columns equals to its movie revenue column. This returns a 10 rows with the largest movie revenue from the data set. The top movies are Avengers Endgame, Avatar, Titanic, Star Wars, and so on. Now how about the movies with the highest movie revenue based on movie release year? So we still want to see the top movie by revenue, but this time we want to find the top movie for different years. We need to use the group by operation. First, let's sort the data set by movie revenue. So DF movies equals to itself with the sort values method with argument by equals movie revenue column. So now if we print out DF movies, you can see that it's sorted from smallest to largest by movie revenue. Next, we can apply on this sorted data frame DF movies, the group by method with argument as its column of movie release year. So we're grouping or splitting the data set by different movie release years. Then on each group, we can apply the last method. This returns for each group. So for each movie release year, 
the last row within each group. Since the data set was sorted by revenue from smallest to largest, this returns for each movie release year the last record with the largest movie revenue. For example, if we scroll down to the more recent years, The Hobbit had the most revenue in 2014, and Captain America had the most revenue in 2016, and so on. Next, what are the number of unique movies in each movie release year? We can again answer this question with the group by operations. DF movies, group by, movie release year again, then we can apply the n unique method. This returns for each group, or each movie release year, the number of unique values for each of the columns in the data frame. But since we only want to see the number of unique movies, it should be based on the column movie ID. So we only want to see this column's result. We can add a filter for this column for the group by operation. So after the group by method, we can add square brackets to filter for the column movie ID only. Great. So what is the total movie revenue for each movie release year? We can do DF movies group by movie release year, then filter for the movie revenue column, then apply the sum method on this column. This returns for each release year the sum or total of movie revenue for that year. The revenue for 2020 is really low compared to the previous few years, and we all know the reason for that. Similarly, if we want to see the average movie revenue for each year, we can copy the previous line of code, then change this sum method to the mean method. Next, let's see a couple of data visualizations. How can we plot the histogram to show the rough distribution of the column movie budget. We can select the column first, DF movies, movie budget column, then apply the hist method on it. This returns a histogram of this column. You can see that the majority of movies have lower budgets. Now what if we want to study the relationship of movie budget and movie revenue by a scatter plot? We can use a Seaborn function, SNS, the alias for Seaborn, rel plot function. Argument as data equals DF movies, X as movie budget, and Y as movie revenue. This returns a scatter plot of the two columns, one on the X axis and the other on the Y axis. It seems like there's a positive correlation between these two columns. That makes sense. The higher the budget, the higher the revenue tends to be. We can also copy this line of code and change the rel plot function to joint plot. This returns not just a scatter plot of these two columns, but also their respective histograms. All right, now here's a harder question. Who are the top 10 actors where the movies they played in have the most total movie revenue? Since we want the actor level data, we need to go back to our data frame of DF movie actors which has the actor information. We can apply the group by method on it with argument as a list of two columns, actor ID and actor name. Remember that multiple actors might have the same name, so we need to group by its ID and name to uniquely identify each actor. Then to only look at the movie revenue, we'll add a filter for movie revenue only. Since we want the total revenue, we'll use the sum method. So this returns for each actor the total movie revenue within this data set. But we want to see the top 10. So we can apply on this result, the n largest method with argument as 10. There it is. Apparently it's Stan Lee, Samuel L. Jackson, and so on. But as you might know, Stan Lee often appeared in popular movies, but not as the leading characters. What if we want to see who are the top 10 actors, where the movies they played leading roles in have the most total revenue? The only changes of this question from the previous question is these actors have to be leading roles in these movies. We can add a filter to the data frame. Let's call the filter variable msk as DF movie actors actor order column, say when it's less than 3. 
Then we'll go back to the previous line of code, copy and paste it. If we add after the data frame here, square brackets, MSK, this will filter for only the data of when actors are the leading actors in the movie. We'll keep the rest of the code the same. There it is. Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Tom Hanks, Emma Watson, and so on. That's it for this project. Hope you've learned something useful. If you like this project, we strongly recommend you to also take our course Python for Data Analysis. This course will walk you step by step through the process with a lot more details and explanations. You'll learn how to import the data, manipulate the data, how to clean the data with missing and outlier problems, transform columns, and how to do exploratory data analysis through statistics and visualizations, all with real-world datasets. Throughout the course, you'll also be given guided practice projects to review and strengthen the knowledge. Feel free to check it out through the link in the description below. All right, thank you, and feel free to leave a comment for this video. See you next time.